miss any of, them, of her skill as a physician. She called the family butler and stable boy. What's the matter? Don't people know I'm here? Each of them wagged his head bravely. They know, Missy. Then why? Their silence was absurd enough. Besides, she already needed Besides, had she really needed to ask, when female doctors were still stigmatized in the United States, a country where men and women were supposed to be equal, what could one expect in a land like India? And one morning, they rolled up the driveway, a brightly painted juka with the mane of its sleek pony braided in marigolds. Flinging the reins to one of the houseboys, the driver alighted and went around to the rear of the conveyance and lifted the ghostly curtain. Watching through the window with bated breath, Ida saw a woman emerge. She wore an orange silk sari, much jewelry, and a bandage about her eyes. Ida flew to meet her, praying silently, please let it be something I can cure, not something that needs an operation or a cataract. Salam, Amal, I am the doctor. You have come to see me. Thanks for a daily lesson with the Munshi, her language teacher, Ida's Tamil was almost getting intelligible. Come, let me help you inside. It was not cataracts, it was a critical case of conjunctivitis. She gave the woman a thorough examination to determine the cause, then treated the inflammation with drops of silver nitrate solution followed by irrigation with boric lotion. You must come tomorrow, she told her earnestly, you must come for many days somehow, or let me come to you. Otherwise, I can't promise that you will not lose your eye. You understand? To make sure, she called Salon, the cook's wife, and asked her to repeat the directions. The woman agreed to come, but that day, Ida endured torment, wondering if she, if she would, and berating herself for neglecting to find out where she lived. The next morning, she was up at dawn, and by eight, pacing the floor of her dispensary. By nine, in spite of the scorching heat, she was down watching by the gate. The woman came. She, faith, she came faithfully day after day until all danger of losing the eye was passed. On the third visit, she brought another woman with a simple case of sore eyes, which was easy to treat. By the time a fortnight had passed, there were patients squatting in little groups on the veranda when Ida opened the dispensary each morning. By the end of the summer, she had all the patients she could treat, men as well as women. Yeah. Then, of course, she got busier and busier, and uh, she realized she could not do it alone, so we can go on to the first The first assistant. They came with all sorts of ailments, abscesses, eyesores, scabies, ringworm, roundworm, broken bones, deep cuts, burns as well as less curable maladies. She was soon performing simple operations in the little room, opening abscesses, setting broken bones, removing small tumors, and the like. One day, the mother of a baby with a huge abscess was so frightened that it was impossible to persuade her to hold the child, and Ida called Salome to help. The girl came from the kitchen, a smile of unmistakable eagerness on her face. She held up a pair of spotless hands. See, Missy? Scrub with soap. You don't have to tell Salome this time. Her long, strong fingers held the little body firmly, if gently enough, to inspire confidence. While the abscess was being dressed and the howls were diminishing, she held the child close to her breast, patting its head. What a pity, thought Ida, that she has no children of her own. A month after we had this dedication, I was asked to see a patient. And it turned out that the patient's husband was Salome's grandson. Oh. And he had many stories of Salome and Ida oh. together. So we taped an interview with him in this room. Oh, oh wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, while Ida was attending the mother, who had screamed even louder than the child, Salome talked with the patient lined up outside the window. Our body is here with a bottle, she called to Ida. She wishes some more medicine for her baby's eyesore. Shall I give her some out of this? Turning, Ida saw the girl's hand move to the big bottle of boric acid solution. Why, yes, she said. But how did you know which one? I know, returned Salome. I have watched Missy. Ida's eyes suddenly sparkled. An idea had come to her. 
How would you like to give up working in the kitchen, she asked the girl a little later, and work here with me instead? Work with Missy here all the time? The dark young face was radiant. So that was the first healthcare student. <laughs> <laughs> Ida found Salome Benjamin an apt and willing pupil. Though lacking formal education, she could read and write Tamil and speak fair English, and her interest in the work and her native, native intelligence made her quick to learn. She was soon handling, handing out medicines through the window, cleaning stores, changing dressings, washing infected eyes, and applying ointments for ringworm and scabies. When the little room was outgrown, the adjoining guest room was pressed into service. And as its single bed became inadequate for cases needing prolonged care, another bed and still another were crowded into its limited space. Going to the dispensary at the morning, I was often kept busy with patients until noon or after. Then there were calls to make in the town and increasing responsibility as her fame spread. For she was the only woman doctor in a congested area of towns and villages containing a half million Indian women. Wow. Mm. So, yes, so that was the first student. And in the next one, which we won't have time to read here, she says, I solely need one trained assistant. And now we have more than 100 courses and a few thousand students. She, you know, she never dreamt of what would happen when she took these first steps. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the next room, which was yes, which was her inpatient section. She had two, three beds in there. What began then in 1901 finally ended up in the Church of South India, which was the first union of Episcopal and non-Episcopal churches since the Protestant Reformation. So, you know, this dusty little town of Velo has had some important connections with history. I, yeah, so my book actually ends with that. Uh, this picture is the foundation stone laying for the hospital where we go next, the Shell Hospital, which was the first hospital that I built. So at about the time when all this was going on, this foundation stone was being laid and the building being built. And also the foundation for the South India United Church, which later became the Church of South India. So it's actually quite a significant place for the building. Thank you. 